Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be going through these four different devices. Um, I'll be mainly aiming this at SRT setups, uh, but I will put them all on uh, a double rope system and just show you uh, how that works. Um, so I'll go through every one individually and just say, uh, just talk about it, how they work, um, the good points and the bad points. Um, and then what I'll do is bring them back to the table and just show you some differences uh, and how some are better than others. But yeah, I'll get each one on a rope. Um, I'll just quickly go up and just show you how they work, um, talk to you about each one. Um, yeah, I'll go through price, um, how you set them up, um, any, any sort of info I can think of really. And then like I say, I'll compare them all. I'll tell you which ones I like, um, the bad points, the good points. Uh, so I'll start with the Akimbo. Um, this is pretty much my um, go-to device at the moment. But yeah, I'll get it on the rope. I'll show you how it goes on, how it comes off, um, and then we'll go through how it works. Um, and then the bad points, good points. Um, and then I'll compare it to some of the others. Here it is. So to get this open, this again is probably the easiest. Um, you literally just snap its spine, I think people call it. Um, but it's that's how it operates. And then all you do is bend it back and then you push the top and the bottom opposite directions and it just pops open. Um, so no tools, no Allen key, no pins. Um, that's literally it um, and then you just kind of push it it just kind of naturally pushes back um, so to put it on there are a couple of different ways but I, what I like to do is put the bottom bollard on first so bottom one in first and then the top one like that and then when you snap it shut just make sure that this bit here isn't around there because it won't close so that needs to be nice and straight and then literally just push it forward and then you're on and that's it, simple as that, and then you're good to go. And then to take it off, just bend it back, and then exactly the same, push it, push the top off, push the bottom, and you're good to go. So as you can see, that's pretty quick. Um, so when you're in the tree with this, if you ever wanna take it off and put it over a limb, or you know you wanna sort your ropes out, or you're base tied and you wanna swap over to the other side that you've, um, you know, you've come up one side, you want to swap over. Um, this thing is brilliant in the tree uh, to take it on and off. No parts to come off. Um, just, just, you know, like I say, snap its spine or whatever you call it and, that, and you're good to go. Um, so the cool thing about this is it has this little tether. Um, so I'll just pop my chest harness on and just demonstrate this. Um, but basically, when I looked at a couple of reviews for this, a lot of people were saying they did not like that because it basically comes out um, without without you wanting it to. Um, so if you were to ascend on this, um, so if I, basically here, there is um, like a spring, I guess. Um, and if you attach, your system it will pull it up and then when you sit back it pops off and um, i really like that i think it's brilliant um the only downside uh, again i i heard people say was when you go up on this um and you want to say if you're if you go up and you're ascending and you stop and you want to quickly grab a bit of deadwood or cut a branch off and you lean back it does pop off um but I never, for me personally, I never really need to sit back um, and then grab a bit of dead or cut something off. Uh, so that isn't really an issue I've found. Um, and even if it does come off, because it's a spring, um, you don't need to kind of try and unclip this and clip it on. Um, you can literally kind of just push, I don't know if I can get closer. You can kind of just push the beaner under the spring and then on. And, and it comes on and then you know off you go back up and then 
if you just sort of sit back it, it pops off this um neck tether um or, or chest harness because obviously it's quite tight fitted um that pops off really easy whereas if you've got a uh, neck elastic or something like that it, that actually doesn't happen that easy because it's got a bit of stretch uh, but to me that is not a problem i love that I, I i like the idea of when you go up um you can literally just sit back and it comes off it's just one more carabiner that you haven't going to take off especially if you've got a knee and a foot ascender um so yeah that for me is a positive um uh, like i said before about the overall size it is so small i mean you can see it is smaller than my hand um it's so light it's easy to get on and off um i have one of these perfect o carabiners so that makes it even smaller in this sort of overall length for me this is my go-to um i won't go into much comparison just yet with the others um but it is for me the smoothest uh the way you tend it up and down you just kind of you can do it loads of ways um but i just kind of put my palm on it i guess so when I go down, I can just about feel the rope. And when you're going up as well, with uh, a chest, knee and foot ascender, um, it kind of just disengages, so it just ride, rides up the rope so smooth. Price, I think, I think now you pay about 300 pounds. Um, I think it was about 280, but I think it's gone up to about 300. But I know certain websites do a package, so you get a chest harness. Uh, a foot ascender, knee ascender and this as well so that might be worth something looking into. I normally climb on this, um, so this is the uh, the Squire 2.0, this is just the pink version. Um, I also climb on the Ecstatic uh, with this um, and I found that I have, don't have to do the settings as much, um, you know they're pretty much always set on the same one um, and to do that you just snap the back um, or spine, whatever you call it. And then they just sort of push forward and then you pull these out, it goes in and out, and then you just twist it to change um, change the friction. Um, it has got dials as well, so you can recognize, you know, you can keep track of what you're on. Um, and the bottom one's exactly the same, but it just has numbers. Yeah, so I'm on D5. Um, for the Squire and the Ecstatic. Um, I've got the Rebel as well, which is a thinner rope. So if I do go on that, I just turn both of those up one more um, and that seems to be fine. The only downside uh, with the with how it works, um, I've only had this twice, um, but I on sappy ropes. So I was doing a conifer takedown and I went all the way to the top to untie my anchor to chug down. Um, I dropped down, so I was gonna send quite a big log, and I hit some sap, um, and it, this would just not move. It was fresh sap, really sticky, covered all around the rope, so it wasn't just like a line. Um, it was all around, and this thing just did not move. I was literally pulling, and I, I, I was doing that, hitting it, and it just would not move. Um, the only thing I had to do uh, was just sideline in on my spikes and just take the thing off, just and then just sort of, you know, spike down um, and then reattach this. Um, but yeah, so that operation wise, um, for me is the only downside, but like I say, that's happened twice. Um, the rain doesn't seem to be a problem either. Again, something I read was, was a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've never had that. Um, it might get a little bit jumpy um, if you're um it's not necessarily the rain it's how dirty the rope gets from the tree so if you're on a lot of moss um if your rope goes around the limb and it gets all mossy it might sort of as you're going down be a bit jerky um but other than that it's fine yeah so that's the rot rock exotica akimbo um but yeah let's move on okay so next is the rope runner pro main reason for me actually buying this because like i say i use the akimbo all the time um was because the points um of where are, are changeable um, so once you know once this starts to slip or or you know you you need to uh, buy new points they're all you can change them all basically 
But yeah, this thing price wise is pretty much about the same as you can buy. I think it's about 280, 300 quid. Um, so yeah, you know, for the same price, um, you can you can have a device where you can change all the points. Um, but yeah, so to put this on, um, you basically have the uh, the sort of typical singing tree um, like bollards or points. I'm not really sure what they're called. Um, and the cool thing with this, it does have the rope uh, sort of little picture. I don't know if you can see. So it kind of tells you where to put the rope. So if you're if you're in a bit of a, a huff or a rush or whatever, it does tell you. Um, so I normally just put the top one on first, um, and then that kind of holds it in place while you do the other ones. Um, and they're all the same. So two pins, push them out. Um, and unlike the old one, nothing. Um, Nothing falls off this, um, or nothing should. So anyway, um, I have had it once, um, and like I said, I haven't had this long, um, but one time I was taking this bottom one off, which I'm doing now, um, and the slip, I think they're called slip pins. Now it's just come to my head. This slip pin at the bottom um, basically went all the way, and then I, this part here and this part here fell, so I had to go and get it. Um, luckily I had the akimbo on me so I could actually go down and get it with that um, otherwise I would have to get someone to send me a system up um, but yeah most of the time it doesn't do that I've only had that once so yeah it might have just been me being uh, a spaz or something um, but yeah so this is it all set up so um, same carabiner again uh, the perfect O so just to make it a little bit shorter um, this is longer um, But function wise, it pretty much functions exactly the same. Um, I found that this is very, um, so when you're on a limb and you tend it, 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 it almost tends the smoothest out of the lot. Um, and to come down, uh, once you dial it in, it is it, it does work very well. Um, there is an adjustment point there uh, for friction. Pretty much the same. Um, so tending up, um, you do get a tiny bit of, of sort of sit back, I guess. Um, the akimbo pretty much grabs straight away, but with this, you tend it, and then you get a little bit of sit back. I don't know if you can, so if I'm up and I tended it, it kind of, I think because there's more parts, it just has that little bit of sit, you sort of sit down and think it's in, and you, you kind of drop a tad. Um, but yeah, to come down again, um, I think pretty much everyone does the same. They kind of put their middle fingers there and then just use your thumb uh, to, to bring it down. But yeah, midline attachable like the Akimbo. Um, the, both of these two devices um, don't have a swivel, um, but I have the Petzl swivel on my harness anyway. Um, so if you don't have a swivel on your, on your bridge, um, yeah, maybe think about that. Um, it's not too bad, but you know, having a device that does swivel, it does help. Um, I think it helps quite a lot. And like you saw with me putting it on, it is a little bit fiddly um, to do. It's not as easy, um, but it's midline attachable. Um, the chest attachment point is there. So another built-in one, which is cool. Um, the only thing I don't like, well, not the only thing, but the one thing I don't like about that um, is it moves quite a lot so when you when you're trying to put this in it can be a bit annoying um, when you're you know if you're if you're sort of all foot ascended in and then you need to try and get that in sometimes you can kind of knock it and especially if it's like that and then you kind of try and get it in um, but it's not too much of a problem and again once you get used to it I think it's fine I'll just take it off just to show you how I'll try and do it as quick as I can. So the bottom one, again, just like the like the akimbo, just do it in reverse. So there's the bottom one. But you see how that nearly, that comes out quite a bit. So if you um, if you're in a tree and you let that go all the way, then these two bits will fall out. Um, then the middle one, again, just slides. Take the rope out. I always put them back in. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it all there. Uh, done if you want 
um, and then the top one is two and you just have to push that one in there and then that should just pop out yeah so that's how it comes off and on um, but yeah that's the rope run out pro um, so yeah that's that one let's move on So next, we've got the zigzag. Um, now, this is probably the most popular device at the moment um, for double rope. Um, so obviously you can't use this single rope on its own. Um, you have to have uh, some kind of friction device. Um, the go-to, I guess, is the chicane. I've got the, um, the ISC uh, rope wrench. Um, I won't go into too much detail why, but my, the main benefit is you can change the bollards on this um, and you can pick uh, different tethers. So this is a homemade tether. Um, so this is the wrench, this is the tether. Um, this is just some homemade Frankenstein thing, um, but you can choose different lengths. Uh, longer, shorter, uh, ones with two sort of attachment points here that go over the zigzag or over the system. Um, this is just a single one um, with the uh, chicane um, you can't change the points so as soon as it's sort of gone if you break it or um, you know it wears you have to buy another one um, so yeah it's just personal preference but they do say use the chicane with this so if you're gonna buy one um, probably get the chicane first um, and they do I think there's offers out there where you can get a zigzag and a chicane together um, so that might be something to look into. Um, so biggest down floor with this, it is not midline attachable. So luckily this rope is, the end is right here. Um, so you literally just feed it through and then that's it. Um, so that looked really easy to do that. But when you've got a 45 meter plus rope, it can be a pain, um, especially when you've finished and you need to coil it all out. Um, yeah, it can be a bit annoying to do that. Most of the zigzags now have a swivel. I think you can buy one with, with or without, so you can choose. Um, this has got a swivel. Um, so I would definitely, well, unless you've got, like I say, a bridge swivel, um, I would definitely get the swivel with this. Um, it is so much better. Because say you can't climb on single line just with that. Um, it just, it's not safe for one and it just would not operate. You can try it from a small height if you really want, but you'll, you'll see, uh, I'll show you now actually, um, as soon as you, some of them might even slip actually, when like I'm sitting on it now, and sometimes they might even slip, but if I take my feet off the ground and try and go down, it is so sensitive, you just can't, you just can't climb on it. It's just not, as well as being not safe, it's just not gonna work well at all um so like i say normally you'd put a chicane the chicane and this are midline attachable so um if you ever put this on don't think oh i've got to coil that through the, the this rope wrench and the chicane um are both midline attachable so you can just leave that on and then if you want to ascend up just pop one of these on um so this again singing tree so it's just one pin um it is only one pin on this um, because it's not life support, uh, whereas the other things, the quickie, the rope runner have two. Um, and then all this does is just sits above the zigzag um, and just creates exactly the same as the chicane. It just basically creates a bend in the rope and adds friction so it becomes usable with SRT. Um, so if I show you that, so now I can kind of control it going down and it just kind of works pretty well. Um, this is a really good choice if you're just getting into um, a single rope, uh, a zigzag is definitely the go-to. Uh, you can use it for double rope and, and single rope um, and it is very, very smooth. I would definitely recommend the chicane rather than this. It can be a bit temperamental. Um, and like what I just did then, when you sort of tend it down like that, which is the, one of the reasons I use this, so I can actually just tend both. Um, 
but there is a chance that that might get stuck there and just keep doing that basically um, so yeah probably don't get one of these at first um, get the chicane um, but yeah so works really well super smooth um, downsides not midline attachable um, good points though on about price it is cheaper than the others uh, I think they're about 150 pound um, I think there might be one a bit more if you get the swivel um, but yeah they're, they're, it's, it's definitely a, a cheaper option um, but then obviously if you're SRT you have to buy the chicane which again I think that is pretty much the same price maybe a bit cheaper um, but you're looking at about 300 quid by the time you bought a carabiner um, you have to get another carabiner as well obviously to attach the chicane so you've got two carabiners the chicane the zigzag um, if you go for the chicane as well you have to get a certain type of carabiner uh, I think it's petzl zone it basically looks exactly the same as this but it has a, a certain groove that goes in the hole um, if you climb mainly double rope the zigzag is brilliant um, and then if you want to ascend SRT grab a wrench grab a chicane and just uh, yeah do that uh, that's what a lot of people do uh, when they're starting off um, just to ascend SRT and then swap back over to double rope this thing is, is really good um, ropes uh, it pretty much can do any uh, and they'll all work really well um, whereas the other devices can be a bit temperamental on some um, and in the wet as well this is this is why I kind of carry this I never ever use this ever um, but if it is absolutely like peeing down and the tree's sappy or the tree's mossy or whatever this will pretty much work exactly the same I, I'm not actually sure why I think it's because there's so many friction points um, and you've got the pulley whereas the others there's like two or three so maybe because there's so many um, it just works very very well um, or because they're all in a straight line or kind of in a straight line whereas the others there's like one there there's one there there's one there or something I'm not sure but yeah in the wet uh, all conditions really this will work very well um, but yeah that's about it with that uh, and like I say the, the, you know to get it off um, you just have to take it off the rope um, which can like I say it can be really annoying um, but yeah so that's the zigzag um, and the chicane or uh, rope wrench so next um, and the last one is a uh, hitch climber pulley um, the hitch climber pulley is actually that and then you've got the hitch itself um, and then again a chicane or um, rope wrench the VT is probably the go-to uh, and the easiest so I'll just quickly show you how to tie that so you basically just give loops or coils or whatever you want to call this um, and then the bottom at the bottom of that so get those similar length and then just literally coil them around um, and that's it um, downside is as soon as you let go it falls or just comes undone um, so I use I'm not actually sure what this is called it's a bit of a mishmash between a couple um, there's a guy on Instagram uh, Julian I can't remember what his Insta Instagram tag is but I think he tied it and I think it was called the monster hitch um, but I'm not too sure but you basically just get, uh, so what's that? One, two, three, four, five. Go over the tail. So this is the top one, this is the bottom. Over the tail and then around the back of the rope and then just through. Um, I won't go too much detail into that, but and that's it. Um, and then that just goes on the pulley. It stays where it is. So you can kind of move it up and down the rope and it just stays there. So for tying this, um, a hitch like that is, is quite handy. Um, but yeah, so that's the hitch tied. Then you've got the pulley. So this is a swing cheat pulley, which basically just means it swings and you can put it on uh, midline. Um, but yeah, so that goes on first, like that. And then carabiner through the hitch or one, one side of the, of the eye. Um, and then normally I put this on the bottom um, and then back on that second eye. And that's that um, so that is how you would climb if you were to use a hitch on double rope the tail would then just come back down and clip onto here um, 
again like the like the uh, zigzag i would not climb on that on srt just that um same principle really if you if you try and um descend on that it will be super jumpy it will burn this out really really fast and again it's it's not safe again same as the zigzag add a chicane or a wrench um just to put that bend in uh, and then that will function um pretty similar to be honest uh, but yeah so definitely the cheapest um of, of all the sort of different systems um and i guess if you look after the, the sort of metal parts they're going to last a long time um but obviously the hitch if you're using this every day um like this the hitch will probably run out pretty quick it'll you know it'll wear pretty quick um so but again i think you know 20 quid for a hitch so definitely the cheapest um but like i say it is midline attachable but as you just saw it's a bit of a pain to keep tying especially if you're in the tree and you want to change it um but as far as function um it works pretty well uh, to use in a sort of say if you're doing a big reduction uh limb walking can be a bit of a pain because there's so much friction um especially with the with the bend here um and it's just it's just a big setup really um it's quite a clunky sort of setup i guess you know um it's not a sort of solid feeling uh, as the others um but it works fine i mean so many people still use this um people think it's dated but it, you know if, if it's not broken why fix it kind of thing um and like i say it's cheaper um and it looks cool i think it is cool you can customize it all as well you know different beaners different pulleys uh, different hitches different hitch cords different color wrenches this like i say is homemade um if you want to go smaller as well you can get a um a, a smaller hitch cord I think this is 75 centimeters off the top of my head um, and if you get the tether that has the two eyes you can put it right down here so you don't have to have this carabiner you can just have it all on one uh, which is which is a good option and you can you can probably compact it by quite a bit to be honest um, but this is just the stuff that I have um, but yeah that's about it really a good option and again if you if you're just getting into SRT and you're, you're not sure if it's for you um, yeah, this could be the way forward because it is quite cheap um, or cheaper. On things like takedowns, um, you know, or spar work, should I say, spar work, this is probably not the best because, you know, as soon as this is attached and you're trying to choke your line off, it is, I've got a really short bridge as well. Like I've tied a knot in there. Um, so my bridge is like 15 centimeters maybe. Um, and that's still, like i don't know over a foot um so yeah not the um not the smallest of systems so on spa work you know again i know i keep going on about the akimbo but it's so small it's brilliant for that but yeah so that's the uh the sort of hitch climber setup um but yeah now what i'll, I'll sort of go back back to the uh to the table and and we'll do some comparisons so just a quick um overview and comparison of the devices um if you're climbing um double rope all the time um a hitch and a pulley is definitely the cheapest option um you could buy a couple of beaners and a, and a hitch for about 80 quid and then um get a hitch for about 20 30 um and then just keep changing the hitch every time it, it, it sort of wears um so for double rope that is a good option um srt for me i think this system um is just a bit um it's just a bit slow a bit sort of old dated if you like um you know the whole system is quite is the longest it's the heaviest um and to tie all of this all the time um, unless you leave it on your rope all the time it's not a problem um but uh you know i change ropes quite often um and I like just taking the device off. Um, the good thing about this, um, like I say, it's cheap. You can customize near enough the whole thing um, if you don't want to have the same as someone else. Um, and like the zigzag, in all weathers, that will pretty much work fine. Um, I mean, this thing works so smooth. Double rope, SRT. Um, the only downside is it's not midline attachable, which for me is a big thing. Like it, it is such, it sounds so simple, but it is such a game changer. 
Um, so yeah, that is a bit annoying. Um, but like I say, it would just work. It doesn't matter what the weather, sap, uh, moss, rain, whatever, it will work the same. So these are kind of the two uh, go-to uh, midline um, attachable devices for SRT. You can use these um, both double rope, um, but obviously there's no attachment point like the zigzag for, for, the, for the, the line. So you have to just put it on the bridge or the beaner, um, which can be a bit annoying. Um, and they don't function the best on double rope. But you can, you know, I, I sometimes use double rope on these to come back down off a tree, uh, just so it's easier to get the canopy tie out. Um, but as SRT devices, they're both brilliant. Um, they are really good. Smooth, uh, when you're going up, they pretty much, you don't even know they're there uh, when, you're, when you're ascending. Um, and to use them, you know, when you're around the tree, they're pretty much the same. Um, they both tend really nice. They're both quite smooth. Um, on limb walks, they're really good. When you're tending your slap back in, it's it's brilliant. It, it's so slick. Um, the if I was to compare them head to head, for me, the Akimbo um, is just a better version of the Rope Runner. Um, like I say, this is only my opinion, but um, the reasons why um, I like this. Um, I think that is a really good idea. Uh, you know, when you get to the top of a tree, you just sit back and that pops out. Um, that is just one less carabiner to take off. I really like that. Um, and to get the beaner on, you can kind of just like, you don't even need to undo the carabiner. You can kind of just push the beaner down and then push it in. Um, I really like that. Um, whereas the rope runner, it does have a built-in one, which is nice, um, but it, it moves quite a lot. Um, so when you're trying to clip it on, sometimes you can like hit the, hit it and like push it and it moves around a bit. Uh, so it's a bit of a fiddle to get it on. Um, and obviously taking it off, you then have to unclip the beaner. Um, the other thing is the, how fiddly this thing is to get on. Um, you know, if you're not in a rush, it's fine. Um, this is just me nitpicking a bit, uh, but obviously there's three pins. Um, one there, one there, one there. Uh, and if I just show you, if I just take this one off, so you push the two and then push that one inside and it's done. That was one pin. So this is just that and that's it. So the time it takes me to open the whole device and close it, it took me to take one pin off this. Uh, you know, so you know, like I say, you shouldn't really be in a, in a mad rush that that matters, but it's more for ease. Um, you know, for me, this is just like effort, effortless to, to do that. Ropes in, shut it, you're done. Um, so when you're in a tree, that is quite nice. You know, if you're over a limb and you want to go the other side, instead of climbing up and over, you can just, you know, take this off, chuck your rope over. Uh, just things like that that make it so, so easy. And there's no pins to drop. There's no parts to drop. Um, there's no tool needed. Um, yeah, it's for me. It's a no-brainer. Like I, I, it might be because I've had this longer, um, but it it just seems like an improved version of that, um, really. Uh, and it's you know if you look at the size, um, it's pretty much half the size. Uh, it, it's it, it's smaller. It's lighter. The only downside is the bollards you can't change. Um, so once this device goes or start slipping, um, you know, you have to get a whole new device, which like I say, not the best for the environment um, and a bit annoying that you have to buy a whole new device. But, you know, by the time you need a new device, give it two, three years, there's probably gonna be a new device anyway on the market. So, you know, you probably won't even bother. With this, you can change the bollards that wear, but you know, by the time you need to do that, you're probably just gonna buy a new device anyway. Um, so not a big issue really the only reason i kind of bought this was because of that i wanted a device i could keep forever um and just keep changing the parts uh but yeah it's not a massive deal to be honest um so yeah you know like i say they both work pretty similar um i do think this is smoother it might be because i haven't had this longer but for me this is you know like everything you get used to something and, and you really like it um but it is it's just so smooth tending going down going up um once you get it dialed into the rope um you know i use it on the squire most of the time and then i go onto the ecstatic 
Um, I don't have to change the, the settings for that, but then if I use it on the Rebel, um, I, I do just tighten it up a tad um, and it still works fine. You know, it, it, it is just a really good device. Um, but yeah, so that's about it really. Um, like I say, if you're just getting into it, maybe look at, you know, these two. Um, it's not to say you can't go into them. Um, there's nothing stopping you. I mean, you know, if you wanted a device that lasted forever, uh, maybe go for the Rope Runner. Um, just go straight in there, you know. It's not to say you have to start on these things. Um, it's just most people have these, like a hitch or a zigzag and then they want to get into srt so you can just adapt those to go with that rather than buying a whole new device um but if you're just going to buy one device and stick with srt forever um you know i personally would recommend the akimbo i think that's pretty much it and the comparisons um i hope that helps uh you know it's a bit of a boring video but you know someone new to srt this might be quite handy um or if you're just looking at getting a new device, uh, you know, there are more options, um, but these are the kind of main ones. Um, and like I say, these two at the moment are kind of the two uh, contenders uh, or the most popular for, um, for SRT climbing. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Um, like I say, they both haven't got a swivel, um, but I ha I've got a swivel on my bridge. I use the Petzl one, which works really well. It's very small. Um, so uh yeah if, if you haven't got one it's not too much of an issue but it is really nice to have a swivel um the same with this to be fair this hasn't got a swivel um but if you just get one on your bridge it does make a world of difference um it is it is quite nice to have that feature any questions any info feel free to comment um or just message me directly that's cool um, like I say, I did do a post on Instagram um, about weight and size, if you want to check that out. Um, pretty boring stuff, but, you know, some people might be interested in that. Um, but, yeah, hope that helps. And, uh, yeah, take it easy.